My name is Stephen Sindoni. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Legends of Mount Shasta. In our broadcast today, we will discuss the Golden Goddess of the Lemurians in a book written by Abraham Mansfield with excerpts from Emily A. Frank's book, Mount Shasta, California's Mystic Mountain. Abraham Mansfield believed that Lemurian gold mines exist deep within Mount Shasta and wrote several books about mines and other phenomena. Abraham claimed that he was the appointed chief of the gods of the Lemurians. The year was 1931. Mansfield tells of the experiences of his friend, not named in his book for personal reasons, who had lost his way on the northeast side of Mount Shasta while following a wounded deer. He finally found the dead buck but he had become completely lost and had wandered around until he was exhausted. Quoting from Mansfield's book, about 3.30 a.m. he heard something saying, Why don't you come with me? My friend looked up and to his surprise there stood a being seven feet tall who said, I am a Lemurian. What are you doing here? Mansfield then divulges the experiences of his friend who was taken voluntarily to a palace and gardens beneath Mount Shasta. His friend and the Lemurian kept going down, 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 and finally the Lemurian said, We are here in the shaft of gold, and is only a little further to my cave, which is lined with gold. You can sleep on my slab of gold. You will not need blankets because the slab was heated chemically thousands of years ago and never loses its constant heat. It is similar to the sun. The golden pillow was placed under the man's head and he was told, Think of what time you would prefer to awaken and you will, as the pillow is a mental thought pillow, radiated so you will become acquainted with mental seance, like the other Lemurians of the living dead beings. The man was also told, according to Mansfield, that there were a series of tunnels and shafts or flues left by the volcanoes which were connected together under the earth like highways, like a world within a world, and the shaft went several hundred miles in any direction. As for the brightness in that underworld, he was told that the walls were painted with a liquid sunshine and were as bright in all the caverns as though the sun itself were shining through. One shaft, he was told, led to the ocean and was near the wilds of Del Norte County, 90 miles to the west near a monastery that was built to train religious Lemurians and that this shaft lined with gold was accessible from the outside. I saw, the man told Mansfield later, plates and gold lined shafts and tables and chairs unbelievably monstrous in size. Then I asked the Lemurian about the beings. He said they had gone to the center of the earth to a far better world than that which existed near the surface in the volcanic caverns and that he would take me there if I wished. The bewildered man, however, decided to return to the surface, mostly to see if he were indeed still alive. The Lemurian agreed to take him back, explaining that he could not be taken to the surface until he was decongested, explaining that otherwise he would die upon entering the surface when confronting the outside air. After thinking it over, the man decided to stay and see a few more sights before returning. He told Mansfield later, I wanted to see the Lemurian treasure vaults and things from the long ago Etrusian and Lemurian civilizations. The Lemurians said that the crown jewels and gold were there, but there was nothing about their way of life as they never kept scientific records at the mines. The gold was taken out for all nations of the world and they built temples with gold on the islands of Etrusia and Lemuria. The Lemurian, according to Mansfield book, told the man that he grew carrots two feet long and two feet through and all other vegetables and fruits the same. He showed the crown jewels of the Lemurian and Etrusian civilizations of thousands of years ago and said the Lemurian and the Etrusian treasures are still there the way they were left after the Ice Age. Quoting Mansfield from his book, 
Before the Ice Age, the ocean was five miles from what is now Mount Shasta. Finally, after seeing other wonders, the man asked to be returned to the surface. I told Lemurian, he told Mansfield later, that I'd like to return to see if I was still actually alive and find my car and my friend who had been hunting with me when I got lost. I explained that he must be worried by now as I had my car keys in my pocket and it was a long walk home for him. Thereupon, he was decongested and returned safely to the surface. He told Mansfield after they were reunited, on the outside they left me on my own again and completely disappeared into the depths of the mountain. I wandered around looking for the road and my car. Finally I said to myself, you fool, get down off this mountain and start over. Go up the old emigrant road that you were on and find your car where you and Mansfield left it yesterday or whatever day it was. He found his car in Mansfield, who said he had nearly frozen to death the night before. As they left the mountain, they compared notes, discovering that they had both had former eerie experiences, and Mansfield revealed that he was acquainted with the shafts of gold and the plates of time from happenings in his own life. His friend said to him, You speak of the shaft lined with gold, the plates of time, and the Yukian of God's sciences. I saw the Yukini on the walls of the caves I slept in, and as the place of time state, it is time to tell the world, and you were the one chosen for the mission. Mansfield explains that the plates of time were assembled thousands of years ago. The Ice Age was coming on, which meant total destruction. The rulers of that ancient civilization were highly educated and had highly civilized sciences, including atomic power. They tried to combat the ice flows by melting them. They blew deep holes in the earth. The more melting, the more water, earthquakes, and volcanic action. Their civilization was destroyed by the use of atomic power. The plates of time were assembled for future generations to preserve the knowledge that they had about atomic power so that a new generation would use it wisely and respect the powers of God in any and all things from beginning to end of all worlds and time. I like to end by saying if we do not learn from the past we will be doomed to repeat it. Thank you for tuning in to the broadcast of the Golden Goddess of the Lemurians.